Let's talk about the Uyghurs. They're an ethnic minority in China who say they're victims of horrific crimes. The Uyghurs are facing genocide because of our religion and our ethnicity. The UN thinks a million Uyghurs are being detained in camps, maybe more. The day before he left office, the American Secretary of State called it a genocide. This is forced labor, this is forced sterilization, things that we haven't seen in an awfully long time in this world. China says it is putting Uyghurs in camps, but that they're job training centers, and that the accusations of abuse are a lie. So we China so who are the Uyghurs? Why is the Chinese government putting so many people in camps? And should the world be doing more about it? So much of what's going on with the Uyghurs is hard to pin down. Journalists and researchers can't get to them. And China says there's nothing to see anyway. Still, there's a lot of stuff we do know. Let's start with the basics. The Uyghurs are a Turkic ethnic group. There are more than 11 million of them. Most are Muslims, they have their own language, and they live in what's called the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. We call our homeland by its historic and the symbolic name East Turkestan, uh, rather than Xinjiang, which is the name given to us by the uh, Chinese uh, occupiers. That was in the late 1800s. And here's Xinjiang on a map. It's huge, three times the size of France. It's got oil, gas, and a lot of the world's cotton comes from here. Plus, a part of China's Belt and Road Initiative is being built through it. It's a multi-billion dollar network of highways and railways to connect China to Europe and beyond. I think the Chinese government has used the Belt and Road Initiative to justify a need for heightened security. And there has been trouble there. <laughs> Ethnic tensions between the native Uyghur community and the majority Han Chinese have existed for years. Uyghurs have often protested about being oppressed. Many have called for their own state, and some have organized attacks. While China hosted the Olympics, a series of bus bombings were claimed by a group called Turkestan Islamic Party. <laughs> In 2009, there were riots and fighting between the Uyghurs and Han Chinese, and 200 people died, most of them ethnic Han. And in 2014, a bombing at a market and a knife attack at a railway station killed 30 people and injured more than 200. That's when China really came down hard on Xinjiang. The Chinese government is confident and capable of cracking down on violent terrorists. We should be clear, there have been violent attacks uh, by occasionally by small groups of people in that region, but there is little to no credible evidence that could in any way, in any way, justify the kinds of policies that we see. So what are we seeing? Well, the accusation is that China is trying to exterminate Uyghur culture and their identity. And activists and Uyghurs who've left Xinjiang say China's doing it in all kinds of ways. Forced labor. Children being indoctrinated. <laughs> Women being sterilized or forced to have abortions. <laughs> it's a long list of allegations. And then there's all those camps. We know there are hundreds of them in Xinjiang. Activists say Uyghurs from all walks of life, professors, doctors, public leaders, ordinary people too, are all detained without a warrant, charge, or trial. Even loyal supporters of the Communist Party haven't been spared. Getting a look inside one of these places hasn't been easy. Although Chinese state media have released their version of what goes on there. Uyghurs are shown eagerly learning Chinese, getting job training, and dancing and singing songs praising the Communist Party. All this, as some argue, is making people freer from poverty, from illiteracy, and from extremism. 
But these camps don't sound like places you'd want to end up in. And all there is the dealish che uh la dindin zahalanala bo bas slam dinid again an Australian think tank found that Uyghurs are being forced to work in factories in Xinjiang and beyond that are in the supply chains of well-known global brands. Though brands like Apple and Nike have denied using forced labor, many Uyghurs also say they've been tortured. Some testified before a U.S. congressional committee. Because my English is not good enough, I would like my translator to read my statement. Each time I was electrocuted, my whole body would shake violently. I thought I would rather die than go through this torture. The detainees in those camps are subject to food and the sleep deprivations and the uh, physical and the mental torture, rape. The list of abuses seems endless. Even the Uyghurs who've managed to stay out of these detention centers aren't free. Not really. The capacity of state surveillance enabled by high technology across the Uyghur region is extraordinary. There are thousands of checkpoints, security cameras everywhere. Many use facial recognition. Rights groups say security forces also put QR codes outside Uyghur homes. You know, what, where they work, what schools the children go to, whether they have a criminal record. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty chilling tool. There's even an app. Human Rights Watch says police use it to monitor people. As we dig deeper into the app, we can see that ordinary, routine, legal behavior is being treated by authorities as suspect. China, though, says it's not doing anything wrong. There are no human rights violations, and this is all about developing Xinjiang's economy, maintaining peace and stability. China says most Uyghurs have been released from re-education camps and found jobs. This report, though, found that detention camps are being expanded. It puts the number at more than 380. That's about 40% higher than previous estimates. There was even a time when Chinese officials denied the camps existed at all. After overwhelming evidence was presented to them, then they said, oops, yeah, we do have some camps. Those are re-education camps. We are uh, trying to train those Uyghurs with job skills. It's a complete lie. And Uyghur activists who've left Xinjiang say China just wants to shut the story down. They accuse the government of going after family members they've left behind. Uh, Rushan, who we've been speaking to, has lived it. Her sister went missing for more than two years. Recently, we find out that she was also sentenced by the Chinese regime. 20 years in prison on the terrorism-related charges. Her sister has been given a 20-year sentence because she's her sister. Rights groups have been saying this stuff for years. There are heaps of investigations online. So what's being done about it? Well, at the United Nations, dozens of countries have condemned what's happening to the Uyghurs, but they can't exactly pass a resolution against China because it has veto power in the Security Council. Uyghurs even asked the International Criminal Court to investigate, but that went nowhere because the ICC has no jurisdiction in China. Plus, China has a way of throwing its weight around. Multi-billion dollar investment projects around the world are seen as helping to keep countries on side. The Chinese government has worked very hard to recruit, coerce, subordinate the voices of governments and organizations across Muslim-majority countries to stay silent. Still, you can't keep everybody quiet. A UK tribunal was pretty blunt about its findings. Such attacks and such acts constitute crimes against humanity. The US has also blacklisted Chinese officials and blocked certain imports from Xinjiang. And just before President Trump left the White House, his Secretary of State called what China's doing a genocide. President Biden's people agree. All of that uh, speaks uh, to, uh, to an effort to, co to commit genocide. It's one thing to call something a genocide. It's another to prove it. The voices demanding justice are growing louder, and there are more of them all the time. That's not something that China, or the world, can easily 